Good morning to our online Bridge family. We're so happy to provide this option for you to still be a part of Sunday mornings at the Bridge. The service will be starting very shortly and we're excited to get to worship and learn from the teaching alongside of you. Now let's be honest. At this point in the morning, most of us have probably gone through a few cups of coffee by now. In the comment section, type out what your go-to coffee order is. No shame if you like to load that thing up with cream and sugar. So go ahead and let us know what your favorite kind of coffee is. If you haven't already, click the share button beneath this video. Sharing the live stream on Facebook is the easiest way to invite your friends to church and help them hear about the bridge. Lastly, I want to encourage you to follow us on our social media. On both Instagram and YouTube, our username is TBCC Warrington, and you can follow us there for more updates about what's going on at the bridge week to week. Thank you again for being part of the Bridge Community Church this week online. We hope that you are filled with hope and receive everything the Lord has for you to experience in this service today. We'll get started very shortly. How many ready to have church today, man? Come on, let's lift our voices. Come on now. Thank you. 
like he did it before, he can do it again. I'll trust him with what comes next, cause my hindsight says I can count on this.
is waiting. God so loved the world. You were the word at the beginning. One with Now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater.
be seated and uh, I was telling somebody I don't know about you but the first Sunday we get released to shake hands and hug I'm running up and down the aisle and I'm gonna be high-fiving everybody and if you're sitting on the end row you're gonna get a hug so you just know that Sunday's coming anybody feel that way <laughs> so anyway hey, this weekend we're taking in some new members and uh, I lost my Jamie you abandoned me. I sound dead without. <laughs> but anyway, we're taking in some new members, and uh, we took some last night, first service, and we're taking a couple. Today, we had a couple that there's illness in their family, so they couldn't be here. And so that leaves us with one couple today. And so, Scott and Sally Small, would you come? We had four of you. But we had a total of, of 10 this week. Yeah, just right here, turn around, face everybody. Usually I have to say, hold up your hand when I call your name. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to assume you know which one is Scott and which one is Sally. But uh, we took in a bunch of others, and I'm just going to at least let you know their names. We took in uh, Melissa Helmick last night and then this morning, first service, Joe Gonzalez, Cindy Legg. Bill and Veronica Rogers and Andrea Watkins. They came in the, and joined the service today to become official members. Let me just say this. Sometimes people say, well, what's the big deal about membership? You know, I look in the Bible. If you go to your concordance, you won't find membership. So what is this about? Well, actually, in 1 Corinthians, it talks about that we, all, we are all members of the body of Christ. And there's, a, there's an element there. In order to be connected to the body, how many know you've got to be committed? Okay? And there's a lot of great churches in our community. I, there's no way that I'll say the bridge is the only church that is serving Jesus in the region. Now, you might get me to make a case that I think it's the best one. Amen. 
And wouldn't you expect your pastor to feel that way, right? But along with that is, at some point, sometime, you have to say, you know what? I know there's a lot of options. This is where I choose to grow. This is where I choose to be accountable. This is where I choose to serve and express my faith, not only for the things that I need, but for what other people need. And so I'm going to ask you to extend your hand this way, would you, to Scott and Sally, as they take this commitment today. Jesus, I thank you for what you've done in their lives and many of the others who have joined this church today. And it's just representative of what you're doing. You're growing and strengthening our bonds with you and with one another. And I thank you for their service of what they already do in this church, in this community. And I pray, God, that as this bond is being strengthened, that their expression is strengthened. I pray your blessing, your favor upon them as they serve you and serve people. We bless them today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Come on, would you give them a welcome this morning? Amen. All right, Pastor Austin, would you come at this time and take this portion of the service? Well, good morning, Bridge Community Church. How are you doing today? Oh, I know you guys can do way better than that. How are you doing this morning? Awesome. We just want to say welcome to our first-time attenders in the building this morning. And we're so excited that you are here with us. We have a few uh, things that we want to tell you about. In the seat back in front of you, you'll see a connection card. We just ask that you fill that out and turn it into the ushers as you leave the building. And as you're leaving the building, you will see a gift bag sitting on a table out there. That gift is for you just because we want to say, hey, man, we're so excited that you are here with us this morning. And if you want to know a little bit more about the church, if you've been going to the church forever, if this is your first time attending the bridge, we do offer a connection group called Growth Track led by Pastor Lisa. And this is a huge, huge way that you can get to know about the church, learn about baptisms, learn about what we actually believe as a church. So if you have any questions on that, contact Pastor Lisa at bridgeforlife.com. And at this time, if you would, turn your attention to the screen for this month's missions video. Each month we like to bring you an update regarding the missions expression here at the Bridge Community Church. In the month of August, we received $7,412 towards the monthly support of our missionaries in the U.S. and around the world. In addition to that, we also received another $5,498 toward uh, projects and uh, specific needs related to the pandemic crisis. That means that we received $12,910 towards our missions expression here at the Bridge Community Church. I want to say a significant thank you because I know that during this season and this time, it is difficult for everyone. But the fact that you're taking the time to still express your generosity to other people who are being affected by this crisis says a lot about the activity of God in your life. Today we're going to give you an update, really a worldwide picture of some of the things that have been occurring in our missions expressions. Two years ago, the Bridge Missions team asked our missionaries what their greatest need was. The resounding answer was prayer. Instead of just sending funds, our hearts were and still are moved towards empowering prayer teams and individuals to pray for the effective ministry of our missionaries. Bridge family, it is such a great privilege to hold up our brothers and sisters on the front lines of the Great Commission, who are giving daily to the task of leading people to Christ, often in hostile environments. Those who said yes to the call to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that God has commanded. Those who said yes to leaving the comfort of home, family, friends, and often so much more, that they would lead souls to experience the joy of knowing Christ. Our missions team would like to share some updates and we ask that you would please earnestly pray with us for our missionaries. Throughout this season of the pandemic, Moses and Rabina in Uganda have been able to pray with many of the hurting and hopeless among their Muslim neighbors within the unreached Nubian people group. As Rabina had laid hands on one 12-year-old girl, she was healed of terminal cancer and began growing hair for the first time in her life. Many were led to Christ while reading the Bible with Rabina in her hair salon that our church was able to fund. 
Moses and Rabina also began a house of prayer in their home and have just received funding to buy a piece of land where they will build a dedicated house of prayer, which will be the very first Christian building inside their community. Please pray for Moses and Rabina. Our Chi Alpha University ministry partners are up and running at full speed as they navigate ministry in the midst of a pandemic. Please pray for effective ministry for the Bantons, the Lemons, Jesse Mack, and Chi Alpha Director Harvey Herman. Karen and Mike Kilmer, members of the bridge, are currently on another disaster relief deployment in Louisiana after Hurricane Laura ripped through the community. Please pray for protection and encouragement for the Kilmers, their team, and those affected by the disaster. Pastors all over the remote parts of Panama and Peru have distributed over 15,000 meals to starving families. Pray that these families would find hope in the Lord as the pastors give and share the gospel. And for us, the bridge, pray that the Lord would break our hearts for what breaks His. Pray about giving, engaging in prayer, and even going yourself to share the gospel with those living without a relationship with Jesus. I trust the stories that you've heard today have inspired you and helped you to recognize how important your participation in the missions expression here at the bridge is. Together we can do so much more than we can as individuals by ourselves. God bless you as you continue your expression of generosity through the missions here at the Bridge Community Church. Each month we like to... All right, and that's awesome. That is so great. And at this time, uh, we will be transitioning into offering, and we do that a little bit different here at the Bridge, thanks to our COVID protocols uh, that you can give online, which a lot of you have transitioned to already. You could text to give or you can give as you leave the building today. But we say a scripture every weekend uh, regarding giving because we like to prepare our hearts to give because how many of you know this is not fundraising, right? This is not just giving towards a cause. This is kingdom work. So let's prepare our hearts today as we uh, say Ecclesiastes 5.10. Would you say it with me? Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us to give to your kingdom. God, let us prepare our hearts to give whenever that may be. God, that we get to give to you and your kingdom. Let every person who gives, Lord, be blessed. God, let your uh, word be spread across uh, this world, Jesus. We thank you and we love you. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. If you would, turn your attention to the screen for today's announcements. Hey church, we hope you're having a great weekend so far. Whether you've joined us in person today or are watching our live stream, we are so thankful to be here with you. Here are this week's announcements. Last Friday afternoon, our canteen unit assisted in Fauquier County Fire and Rescue Units with a structure fire in Markham at Stribling Orchard. The canteen was able to provide first responders with drinks and snacks. Also, Chick-fil-A of Warrington provided sandwiches and chips. If interested in knowing more about the canteen unit, please reach out to Dave Cooper. Pastor Danielle will be teaching a four-day abduction awareness women's self-defense class in the White Box starting this Tuesday evening, September 29th. This self-defense class is open to all women ages 12 and up, and a portion of the proceeds will go to help some of our very own youth students help attend fall ball. To register for the classes, head over to bridgeforlife.com under the events calendar. The Bridge is excited to open a weekly in-person homework help center up at the Ministry Center. Starting this Wednesday, September 30th, from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., the third space will be open as a homework help center for local students. Through the help of the Fauquier Public School Board and PATH Foundation, the bridge is able to pay tutors to help students in person with their homework. If interested and available to help weekly as a tutor, please contact Pastor Danielle by email. Here at the Vertical Student Movement, we're getting excited for our annual fall ball, a formal dinner and dance. It's going to happen Friday, October 16th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. here in the Ministry Center. Students 6th through 12th grade, we don't want you to miss this memorable evening with catered dinner, dancing, and a ton of great surprises. Tickets are available for $40 at bridgeforlife.com under the events calendar. We hope to see you then. This Thursday, October 1st, starting at 10.30 a.m., Joymakers is meeting in the cafe. 
Joymakers is a chapel setting fellowship group led by Pastor Malik that meets once a month for a time of hymns, devotion, and food. Everyone is welcome to attend. If planning to attend, please bring a dish or dessert to share. Thank you so much for watching, and please remember to keep up with us throughout the week on our social media. In case you missed any of these announcements, you can watch them again on our website, bridgeforlife.com. We hope you have a great week ahead and look forward to seeing you again next weekend. Continue on in the series that we began a few weeks ago, and I've asked Pastor Lisa to take this segment of Scripture from Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, and I think you'll see why. Uh, it's very appropriate for the ministry that she does here at the bridge. Not only that, it's always good for pastor to take a break and get some rest. And uh, it's been kind of nice to sit and receive. Now I know, uh, no wonder you always look content when you leave. So I'm going to sit out there with you and get fed myself. So would you guys give a great bridge welcome to Pastor Lisa she shares. Would you do that today? Thank you so much. And this is actually the first time that I've spoken to, to people. <laughs> I love you. It's so good to see people. Um, the last time I spoke was on Mother's Day, and I spoke into a camera. It's very, very difficult to do that. I even made a joke, and I didn't hear anybody laugh. So when you make jokes, when you have people, then you know whether or not the joke works or not. So then you didn't. I couldn't tell, so I was afraid to do any jokes because no one was laughing. But anyway, it is a very difficult thing, and Pastor Greg and Pastor Austin and Pastor Danielle had to do that for several weeks. So I am thrilled to be here today to speak to you in person and see your faces. Amen? As Pastor Greg said, I am continuing the series Unchained to live in joy and freedom. Would you stand with me, please, as we read the scripture passage, Philippians 1, 9 through 11. Read with me. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and be, be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to the people that you love. And I just pray for your anointing today. Because God, without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, my words are just words. I pray for the anointing to speak to our hearts and lives, to help us to grow in faith the way you want us to. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 You are welcome to be seated. So today, this scripture passage, Philippians 1, 9 through 11, is actually the theme is growing in godliness. Paul points out five things in this scripture that he is diligently praying for them. This passage demonstrates a progressive growth in our faith. See, this passage is actually a prayer that Paul is praying for the Philippian church. And we, we forget that when we say the Philippian church, we're talking like about a house church, a small group of people. When we say church, we're not talking about hundreds or a couple hundred people. These are home churches. These are, this is a home group. In fact, Paul, I'm sure, said and called it a connection group at one point in time. But this is where Paul was able to speak to the, to the um, Philippian church and because he loved them. And, and they loved Paul. So he was able to, to speak to them to help them grow in godliness because they could accept what he had to say because of their relationship and their close relationship. You see, growing, growing is difficult, especially inward, internal growth. Very difficult. A lot of times people refuse to, to grow emotionally and internally because it's painful and it's too hard. 
And I have a good friend who's gone to be with the Lord. His name is Dr. Richard Dobbins. He actually was a Christian psychologist and counselor. He started a, a ministry series or ministry counseling center. In Emer or it's called Emerge in Akron, Ohio. Dr. Dobbins is so is a world-renowned psychologist and counselor that they, even secular counselors, still use his material today. He, he, was, he was incredible, and it was an honor to be able to know him. But this is his quote, To live is to grow, to grow is to change. If one cannot tell the difference between the change that results from growth and the change that results from the loss of one's faith, the fear of losing that faith makes one resist all change so that one's faith becomes an inhibitor of rather than a facilitator of his or her growth. A lot of people dismiss growing internally because it's painful and difficult. And you need people around you to help you in times of growth. And times of growth are when you're in the, in the biblical sense is and when we're growing in our faith is when you're going through very difficult times. Those are actually times of growth. And we as followers of Christ sometimes dismiss that because we'll say, well, the Lord wouldn't cause that much pain. The Lord doesn't cause that pain. The Lord's trying to help you grow so that you won't continue in that pain. You know, we have, we have three grown ch children, and we have two boys. And I'm, I'm sure some of you remember when your, when your boys were growing um, in their preteen years, you know, where they, that summer they grow between six and seven inches in one summer. And then they complain about their knees, right? They never said to me, our sons never said to me, Mom, call the doctor and tell him that stop Give me some type of medicine or something that will make me stop growing. Instead, it was, Mom, my knees are killing me. Is there anything that the doctors can do to help my knees? But, but that is outward growth. And obviously, we don't want our children to stop outward growth. But the inward growth is difficult. So my first point today about growing in faith is about progressing and growing in love. See, verse 9 says, Your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Paul's affection for the Philippian church is identical with the love that Christ also had for them. And the word love here is used as agape love. The definition is unconditional love. This is not romantic love. This is unconditional love. It is a biblical love that is not empty of sentimentalism, but it's anchored in biblical truth. We forget that we are to love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Kevin, you're my brother in Christ, and I love you. And Kevin and I and Kate, we have a, a, a good relationship. And I know Kevin loves me as a sister. Now, the only romantic love that I have is with this man right here, Pastor Greg. And Pastor Greg, so you know, if you are new today, is my husband. <laughs> so I need to make that clear. We've been married over 37 years, but the romantic love that we have, if you are married today, is with your spouse. If you are praying for a spouse today, someone else's spouse is not your answer to prayer. <laughs> right? Someone else's spouse is not your answer to prayer. But we are to love brothers and sisters as Christ loved them. We are to love each other like you're my brother and you're my sister. 
so that we can come together and do the work of the ministry without feeling like boundaries are being crossed. Pastor Greg and I have boundaries, and those boundaries aren't crossed. If you're married here today, you should have boundaries. There are, only, there are certain boundaries that don't get crossed. But people get so fearful in the church that they're afraid that they're going to cross those boundaries. And that's like what I said with Dr. Dobbins' um, thing that he said here, his quotation, that sometimes if we resist change because it be- and it becomes a inhibitor of our faith, because we resist that kind of change. We don't think about we are brothers and sisters in Christ. But God has called us to love one another as brothers and sisters. See, in knowledge is from the Greek word that means genuine, full, or advanced knowledge. This scripture, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight teaches us that it needs to be balanced between love and knowledge and insight. Paul is praying for them to go deeper in the truth of God's word, not just knowing right from wrong, but deeper into God's word, deeper into how we are to love one another, how we are to love the church. See, love without knowledge is making decisions based on emotion, without any regard to God's word, and how he wants us to live. Knowledge and insight without love is legalism. And we know that by the scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, where if you correct someone without love, you're just a clanging gong. Isn't it easier to accept corrective criticism when someone you know and someone you're close with brings that corrective criticism to you because of the relationship that you have with that person it's easier to accept because you know they're saying it out of love but if someone brings corrective criticism to you it doesn't feel like feel like corrective it just feels like criticism because you don't have a relationship with them for them to bring that type of criticism to you So it sounds like a clanging gong. Love without knowledge and insight is susceptible to emotionalism and it can become perverse. We are to look at each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen? See, the progression is from love to excellence. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Love is foundational and it is so intertwined in the gospel that our love for Christ should motivate us to be obedient to his word. And this progression of growing in faith from love will take us to excellence. My second point is progress and excellence. The first part of verse 10 says that so you may be able to discern what is best. Now, this is thinking and living biblically. That knowing and experiencing God's love for us should inspire believers to live according to his will as fully and faithfully as possible. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things see we all know the scripture in romans 12 of be transformed by the renewing of your mind well this is the template right here be transformed by the renewing of your mind this is how you do it right here you know it's it's easy to think bad thoughts isn't it it's easy to think critical thoughts But you have to train your mind to think biblical thoughts. And when you train your mind to think biblical thoughts, you will start patterns of behavior that will change your heart, 
and it will ch also change your good works. For when we trained our mind to think biblically, we transform our heart and we act differently. With, with this excellence and this type of pattern to help us to become who God wants us to be and to think correctly and biblically and to think as brothers and sisters in Christ how we love them helps us develop integrity. My third point is progress in integrity. The second part of verse 10, and it says that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. This progression in integrity goes deeper than just being kind and honest. See, Paul, again, is, is wanting the Philippian church to go deeper in integrity than just to be a casual, kind, and honest to people. This is an integrity that goes deeper with our brothers and sisters in Christ and also with those maybe that we are trying to reach for Christ. See, this progression is called relational integrity. Now, before I continue, I have to confess sin to you. You know, when you preach and when the Holy Spirit is working and telling you to um, about your message, preparing your message, he also talks to you about something you need to change or something that you did and that you need to come clean and confess your sin. So I'm going to confess my sin to you. What's funny is it, this is as quiet as it ever gets. <laughs> right here. Because everybody's like on the edge of their seat. <laughs> Tell us. Tell us. Well, if you don't know, Pastor Greg and I, we actually love M&Ms, okay? <laughs> We actually eat a lot of M&M's. We eat more than we should. Now, that is not my sin. I am not confessing that. <laughs> we do eat a lot of M&M's. And the thing is, it's not the little, little bag of M&M's, okay? I call those teaser bags. I hate those things. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the big bag of M&M's, right? And also, we, we decided that we were going to make this pack together that we were going to give up processed sugar, which included M&Ms, for 30 days. Okay? We were going to do this together because we knew we were eating just way too much sugar and we really needed health-wise to cut back. So we made this pack for 30 days. And whoever lost, that person had to pay the other person who won $50. <laughs> we, are, we are actually very competitive. In, in a good sense and in a fun way. So this was actually a fun thing that we, we did until it got to the point where somebody, in tw after 20 days, failed. <laughs> and I was getting ready to say, and who do you think failed? He already pointed me out. <laughs> so after 20 days, I went and bought a bag of M&M's and I ate them all before I got home. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him, oh, I'm sorry I failed. I didn't tell him. A few days later, about probably on the 24th or 25th day, he said, well, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. How you doing? <laughs> he said, no, how you doing with the no sugar? And I said, why do you want to know? I said, I failed. I've eaten a whole bag of M&M's. And, and so you're welcome to go ahead and, and go ahead and fail and eat M&M's. You're welcome to go eat whatever you want because I've already failed. He goes, oh, no. I'm going to make it through because I want the $50. <laughs> so here is where I sinned. So on the 29th day, in the evening, he just had to go eight more hours, or oh, probably even less than that since it was in the evening. He was in our living room watching TV. So I had bought M&Ms that day. 
And I went in, and I sat by him, and I opened up those bag of M&Ms. I started eating them. I showed them to him, and I said, do you want some? I was trying to make him stumble, only to make me feel better. So that was my sin. I was trying to make him stumble. And I want you to know he made it to the next day, and I had to pay him $50. But relational integrity actually looks like that. This is when you love people, especially other followers of Christ, and you would not want anyone to stumble in sin. So even though God may have set you free from something, or you may not even struggle with some sort of issue, and yet you might partake of something or eat something in front of somebody who's struggling. Because, you know what? Yeah, you have the right. But when does our love overshadow the right? What's right? So you have the right to eat whatever you want. The Bible says so. But that's not love. When you, when you say to someone, well, they just, need to, they just need to get saved and they just need to get over it. Well, what if it causes them to stumble back into their sin? See, that's not love. What if someone I was out to lunch with and they were just pouring their heart out to me because they were really struggling with their weight? And we were at a restaurant and we would eat salads. And then I say at the end, I flag the waiter or waitress and say, could you just bring me a big old piece of chocolate cake, please? <laughs> that wouldn't be love. Would it be, would it be um, wrong for me to eat cake? No, you can, I can eat cake. But, but yes, it would be wrong for me to eat it in front of them. Because that's not showing any love. Do we love people enough that when we know they have a struggle or an issue, do we refrain from that activity because we love them? Because they are more important to us and their walk with the Lord than what we want to partake of. Do we love them enough? Romans 14, 15 says, If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy someone for whom Christ died. Integrity cannot be built without obedience that progresses to good works. That is good works. When you do not partake of something that you know someone else is struggling with, that's part of good works. Paul is saying, go deeper than just raking somebody's yard. Go deeper in good works. Go deeper. So my fourth point is progress in good works. Verse 11, the first part of verse 11 says, being filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. You know, Galatians 5, and 23 is about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. See, we learn what ethical fruit is. And we will, bear when, we will bear that fruit when we live intentionally and with love. Paul is encouraging his friends and the Philippian church to focus on the inward change of the heart that produces good fruit in doing good works which also includes speaking life to others. You know, if, this, if the COVID um, pandemic has taught me anything, it's this. I don't have to go to church, I get to. You know, we have brothers and sisters in Christ across our country that have still not been able to meet together in their church. So I don't have to come to church. I get to come to church. Praise God that we get to meet together. 
It also goes deeper than that in speaking life. Imagine on the way to church and your children sitting in the back seat, well, and you say, well, I have to get to church because I got to teach them kids today. <laughs> That's not speaking life. Imagine hearing, man, I can't wait to get to church today because I get to teach the children. I get to teach the children about Jesus. I get to work with the youth and teach them about the Lord, what it means to serve God, and how, they can, how I can model that in front of them. See, we have to ask ourselves, are we modeling the fruit of the Spirit and activities we are participating and serving in for the next generation or are we just complaining about the next generation? They do not know. The younger generation has not been trained like we were. I mean, when I was in school, I, they were still handing out the Bible. They have not been trained. They do not know the word like we know have known the word if you grew up in church. A lot of them didn't grow up in church. I do meet a lot with those who are new in the Lord or have returned to the Lord. And these are some of the things I, I get from them. One asked me, I want to buy a Bible. Should I buy the Old Testament or the New Testament? I wanted to bust out laughing. I thought they were kidding. They weren't joking. They didn't know the difference. They didn't know that the Bible, that you can buy, the, buy them together. They didn't know that. They thought you had to buy one or the other. I also prayed with a, a person, new in the Lord, who had a business. And after our conversation, I prayed for her, and I said, and I asked the Lord to bless her business. When we said amen, she said to me, no one, is at, no one has prayed a blessing over me before. See, they don't know. We need to speak life into those who don't, who don't know what we know as followers of Christ because it's easier, it's easier to teach those who already know. The hard work is teaching those who don't know the faith who don't know the Christianese. That's difficult because, you know, they may not get it the first time you teach them. They may not get it. And most of the time, they don't. So you've got to walk alongside them for quite a while to help them. It's a, it is. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But this progress, when we, when we are in this progress of good works for one another, and, and surrounding each other in relationships and getting close and learning more and going through a difficult time. You know, if you are not involved in a connection group, I can't encourage you more to get involved because when you are going through a difficult time and you're going through growth, people can help you in that growth because you might... You might think a scripture means one thing and you've misinterpreted it. So they can help you grow. They can help you to progress in the faith. And when you progress in the faith and in good works, that's when you can glorify God. And that's my fifth point is the second part of verse 11, to the glory and praise of God. Praise the Lord for, for putting people in, in our lives that we can help them learn about the Bible. That The glory all goes to God. Praise the Lord when, when we go through a rough time, a rough time of growth. That's our testimony. And there is nothing like going through that experience and it is more fulfilling when we go through a time of growth. And it's painful. And it's hard. But when we get through that, the bonding that we just did with God the Father, 
is nothing that you will ever be able to experience without going through that with him. And also going through that with other people that are in your group, that are in, in your vicinity, that, that are people that help you with your walk of faith. Because it not only bond, bound, who? Bonds. Bonds you with the Lord, but it bonds you with other people as well. So today, in my closing and conclusion, I just want to say this progression of growth in love, excellence, integrity, good works, and glorifying God happens through relationships. This scripture that um, I'm going to read to you, this is the saddest scripture I know that's in the Bible. And this scripture actually what drives and motivates me in the Connection Group ministry. If either of them falls down, that's talking about if two or more together, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. That is so sad to me. And the Lord really used that scripture in my life when we moved from Indiana. We had lived in Indiana almost 50 years our entire lives when we moved to Florida before we moved here. When we moved there, I didn't know anyone. No one. Pastor Greg at that time was traveling a lot. He was also going through school and he had to travel for school as well. I was left alone all the time in an area where I didn't know anyone. All I had was my dog. And two months in to when we moved there, my dog died. I know, it's so sad, right? I had never cried so hard for an animal in all my life than I did that dog. Because I kept saying to the dog, you can't die, you can't die, you're my only friend. Because I had no friends. And you know what? We were attending a church. I attended a church by myself a lot. And, and they had activities and things, but you know what? I didn't go. And so what it caused me to do was to isolate myself. And I kept withdrawing and withdrawing and withdrawing. That's not a fun, a fun part or a fun step to be in, in withdrawing. You go deeper and deeper into withdrawing. It's hard to get out of. I knew I was in trouble. So I contacted the pastor and I said, is there any way I can teach a small group teach a group about the Bible is there any way I can do that he said absolutely you know what that was hard because I had to initiate that and it was difficult because there were people that came I didn't know I didn't know if they liked me I didn't know if they wanted to be a part of the group if they were just going to come one time and not come back I had to force myself and initiate that because I want to tell you, you do not have to suffer in silence and being alone. Are you going to go to heaven? Yes. But, but why suffer? Why suffer by yourself when you can get into a community of people in a small group to help you through the, the journey of life? And not only to help you, but then you can turn around and help them. Because when you come in close contact and, and you begin to make friends and you begin to, to bound like that and to bond like that, there's no stopping you. Because you have a group that will help you in times of, times of sorrow and pain. The best example that I can give you of needing one another to grow in our faith is the redwood tree. Redwood trees are so beautiful. 
Do you know, though, that their roots are relatively shallow? They actually only go down to about 6 to 12 feet. And yet these trees rarely fall over. They will withstand strong winds, earthquakes, fires, storms, and prolonged flooding. How can something that can weigh up to 500, ton, 500 tons and reach 350 feet in height live centuries, remain standing with roots that only go down about 10 feet? The interesting thing about the redwood tree is that their root system is so intertwined that the other redwood trees actually literally hold each other up. Not only do they hold each other up, but they grow so close together and dependent on one another for their nutrients and growth as well. They are the only ones with the strength and ability to support the other trees around them. And the pastoral team is helping me with an illustration today. You see, what beneath the surface of these trees, they're like a root of army of men who have their arms interlocked, standing and supporting one another. They are preventing the adversaries of life from knocking each other down. And they are also making sure that there is plenty nutrients for everyone to grow. See, not everyone in your circle will have the same root depth and faith, nor, nor should they. Because if they all do, then you're not reaching out and developing and discipling others. Because this is the point I want to make all of us. I don't care how long you've been in the faith. I don't care how much biblical knowledge that you have. One day, your foot, feet are going to get knocked out from under you. There's going to be something very devastating happening in your life. And if you don't have someone to hold you up in a group, then, then you're going to fall. But because they could hold Pastor Austin up, that will help him in his faith. And then the next time, it might be Pastor Gray that needs held up. I don't know what we would have done without the body of Christ in times where we had difficulty, in times where we needed others to, to come around us, to lock arms and hold us up. We, we all need that. We all need to intertwine our relationships so that we can support and encourage each other through that storm. So I want to encourage you again today to reach out, to, to consider joining a home group that we call Connection Groups, because we want to help you grow in your faith like Paul helped the Philippian church to grow in their faith. Amen? Amen. Could you stand with me, please? And let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word, how, how it ministers to our heart, how it helps us grow, how we know how you put into place other people to help us when we go through hard times. I thank you for the relationships that have always helped us. And I know, Lord, that there are people sitting out there in the congregation today that have had that same experience. I thank you for that. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, the first relationship for our growth in faith is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I would like to introduce you to him today. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, just raise your hand, put it right back down, and we will pray for you and introduce you to Jesus our Lord. Is there anyone today? Amen. Father, I thank you for each one here. I thank you, God, for their, their walk with you. Lord, that they have a relationship with you. And I just pray, God, that you help them to grow. 
Help us to reach out to others to also help them grow in our faith. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, Pastor Greg is coming to pray the benediction and the blessing. That was an old word, wasn't it? Benediction. <laughs> the blessing. Amen. And then he'll give us instruction on how to leave. Can you show your appreciation to Pastor Lisa this morning? Would you do that? I'm going to uh, say the blessing, and then Pastor Malik's going to lead us in a song. And we're going to sing. And while we're doing that, there are a couple folks in the aisles, and they'll begin to dismiss row by row. And that's to prevent us all from congregating in the aisles simultaneously. So if you would please wait till they get to your row to dismiss you, that would be appreciated. Would you just lift your hands this morning as I say the blessing and we prepare to go. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May he bless you in this city and in this county. May the fruit of your womb and the crops of your land and all your livestock be blessed. May he bless the work of your hands at home, at work, at church, in this community. May he bless your coming and your going. May the Lord grant the enemies that rise up against you be defeated. When they come at you in one direction, let them flee from you in seven directions. May the Lord send a blessing on everything that you put your hand to do. May He continue to establish you as His holy people. May all people see you have been called by the name of the Lord. May the Lord grant you prosperity, opening up the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty. May He bless the work of your hands. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody gave a shout of amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Come on, let's sing it now.